When we think about how well groups will work together, a common intuition is that groups will start out not working very well and gradually and steadily get better. In the 1960s, Bruce Tuckman studied how groups develop and he found that the performance of groups typically followed a pattern more like this. His theory has been a useful guide to group formation since then. He found four stages. And he found that groups seem to go through the stages in order or get stuck at one. The groups that perform well reach the third or fourth stage. The first stage he called forming. In this stage, the people in the group tend to be very polite, but don't achieve much. They are getting to know each other and wondering about how they will fit in the group, and there may be some uncertainty. People will be agreeable and not want to cause any trouble. The group needs clarity, structure, and leadership. The teacher can help by providing time for icebreakers in the small groups or other community building activities in the small groups before launching the project. The teacher can support with their leadership and clarity about the group task. Groups that can't get past this step won't perform very well. The next stage is storming. In this stage, there is some pressure to perform and there can be power struggles over whose ideas are heard or used and control issues about who is in charge. There will be a stronger focus on the differences in the group. The group needs balance of effort, everyone contributing, clear roles so that people know how to contribute, and communication skills to be able to work through the conflict and differences that come up. The teacher can help by building roles into the activity so that there is a balance of effort. Each person has a personal responsibility in addition to the group having responsibility together to accomplish the task. The teacher can support by designing suggested roles into the group activity. The teacher can also be alert to conflict and coach groups in working through conflict by modeling listening to both sides of a conflict and restating the two perspectives as he or she hears them, instead of ignoring the conflict or solving the problem. Groups that get stuck here often have one or two students who end up doing all the work. The next stage is norming. If the group has learned to communicate through the tensions or conflicts of storming, they have come to value differences and the group shows cohesion and commitment. The team has developed their own way of working together and have processes that work for them. The decisions at this point are often made through consensus. In this stage, the teacher can help by being available, but letting them work independently. Look for opportunities to further empower the group to do its work. Regular, brief check-ins to confirm that they're on track can help. Groups that reach this stage tend to perform well. The next stage is performing. The group has figured out how to work together. They communicate through conflict, recognize and value differences, and have developed mutual trust. Groups at this stage tend to be flexible and productive. They care about one another and they work together effectively and are satisfied with their results. The group works autonomously without much need for input from the teacher and is interdependently solving problems on their own. These groups are largely independent, acknowledging the positive ways in which they are working and asking sincere questions about what they're learning or discovering can reinforce their sense of competence and independence. Groups that reach this stage tend to perform well, enjoy working with each other, and take satisfaction in the work they do together.